Good morning, guys. On Wednesdays, this mastermind call is live on YouTube. On the other days, it's private just for people in my Facebook group with Tech and Sports. So today's conversation is going to be about what is holding your eBay business back. And I think a clearly defined problem usually gives you the answer that you're looking for. So as an example, I'm currently testing a digital camera instead of my phone. And a couple of things that are slowing me down are the shutter takes about one and a half seconds to take mm -hmm. the picture. And I don't know if there's cameras that are faster, but the actual taking pictures part seems to be faster on an, on an iPhone. Uh, I know the quality on a camera is a little bit better, but I, I am thinking like a clearly defined problem would be, is that a problem for anybody else? Try to figure out what people's processes are. Yesterday I asked, um, tech and sports about the speed of his photos and he's doing roughly 40 sets of photos an hour and I am at 30 sets of photos an hour and I'm not even taking pictures of the measurements so um, there's this new term I call I call which is a armchair reseller because I, I meet all these resellers that are like oh I would never do that or that doesn't work or this doesn't work but they, they actually don't know because they haven't been testing it so I want to look at how if you don't know how long it's taking you to do it, then it's not like your opinion doesn't matter. But it's like funny when I, whenever I watch sports and people say, oh, I would have never done that play. It's like, how do you, you don't know. You're not a professional athlete. You weren't in the game. It's like, you have no idea. But anyway, it's funny because sports talk radio is one of the most popular things in the country and people aren't even in the game. So it's like reseller chat is really popular. But I want to talk about what people are actually doing. So what in your business is holding you back? Let's start with Travis. Travis, you're at home. What's preventing you from, from growing your store? Um, right now, I think it's just um, a matter of sourcing. So I'm currently working on, on finding sources for me so I can just list. I just want to focus more on, on listing them. Right now, I'm getting 20 to 30 items listed a day, but mm -hmm. need to up that to the 50 plus. So let's be more specific. You're looking for more, more or, specifically with that. I'm, yeah. And I'm going to ask you some follow-up questions like sure. um, how many items would you like to get each week inbound? Any ideas? I yet? was, I was, yeah. Um, I, I want to list that 50 a day. So I, I would need at least that, you know, kind of that's the minimum. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so I've started talking, reaching out to, other pickers and talking about buying from them and trying to figure out how the pay structure works that way. You know, do I pay a third of the MSRP? Right. You know, like what's kind of reasonable because they have to make money too. And, and I get that everybody needs to make money. They're doing a job. And uh, so, yeah, I, I don't know. That's kind of what I'm trying to figure out right now in uh, my whole process. That's a great, um, awareness basically if you set up the pay plan for them then they will be able to work the pay plan and make money because that's like you'll see you know any job that i've ever had i always figure out how i can make the most money in the least amount of time and i've always looked for jobs that are like that if you're looking you know that that's probably my um, best tip for sourcers is the hourly versus commission people who want to get paid hourly those are people usually i don't hire for for sourcing because mm -hmm. they, they actually make more money per piece. I would love to pay $15 an hour for someone to shop at the bins. But I think I would, me personally, I've had more success with people being paid on commission. Because if they're making thousands of dollars, then they're going to be really motivated. Mm -hmm. So per piece, commission-oriented people. Um, it's really hard to do 30% of what it sells for um, unless the item doesn't require any prep. So okay. it's almost like, you know, that's a, that's a challenge. I'll think about that too, but there's, um, well, I'll think about adding some more resources on the criteria of the scout because, you know, like before the chat, who was, who was talking about garage sales? Um, oh, it was Paul. Oh, was I was going to go ahead. Oh, I was going to throw in as a caveat. I only, the list of brands I gave him was only like higher end kind of stuff where I know I can sell for at least $30 that's the list that I started with and just kind of, yeah. And then obviously knockout for if there's a stain or something that I got to do, it come, the price comes down, but 
So would you pay nine bucks for something that sells for 30? Um, yeah, depending on how fast I think it can move. Yeah. The turnover makes a difference. So I'm not yeah. going to pay $9 for something that's going to sit. Right. I agree with that. It, it really depends on how long you think it's going to sell too. That's why I think that the, the bread and butter items, like the ones that might take a while, I think the most you could pay for a $30 item is maybe five bucks if you don't know. Mm -hmm. But if you know how long it's going to take, you might even spend 15 because if you know how long you, it's going to take for you to get your money back, that's a huge, that's why Amazon's so popular. Right. Um, so one more thing that I, um, I'm going to suggest, because Patty just DM'd me saying, um, do I know anybody that's good at private label? I don't. But if anybody in the chat that's listening does know someone that's good at private label, let me know. I am going to do two private labels inside the Facebook group. And uh, it's not necessarily going to distract me from my main business because it doesn't matter to me if it works or not. These are just two products that I personally need. So I'm going to go through the whole process of ordering them on Alibaba, um, learning who makes it, going over that whole process. And then for um, we'll go through all the problems. And if, if I don't end up selling them, which it doesn't matter to me if they sell them or not, I'll just use them myself. These are just products that I use thousands of and I want to just might as well use that example to help people find products that are more replenishable because everyone here everyone says they want items to sell over and over again without listing but it takes time to find those items let's go to Paul Paul good morning what um what's holding you back in your business well uh, I get <laughs> I'm easily distracted if I'm on, if I'm honest um I, like plus plus recently I've had some family stuff as far as like my son got in a car accident I had to hurry up and go find him a car um, and then my other son came home from college and his car needed maintenance so, so we had to take care of that but um, right now what, what I'm looking at on the business side of it and, and I'll, I'll work all that stuff out and it's only temporary but um, is, is sourcing um, and but also either finding a niche or just deciding that I'm that I'm just going to sell everything and, and just go with that because I, I'm, I'm in the phase where I'm still having to research every, a lot of stuff because because there's such a variety of stuff that I sell. Like I picked up electronics, um, which are great. I mean, I, I got them for like five dollars a piece and they're selling between 50 and, you know, one hundred dollars on, on eBay. And then, um, you know, I've got that. I've got golf clubs. I've got just all assortment. I mean, I've got a flute over here, <laughs> you know, I mean, I got great deals on them all, but, but right now my bottleneck is kind of research and also um, prepping stuff for photographs and, and then learning what's the best way to ship them. So, I'm, so research really is my, is my thing right now. I want to ask people how they set this up. So as an example, on my workstation to the left, I now have a big black tub. And what I do is I fill that tub up, do all the descriptions and then do the photographs and then list for, for me personally, I do the descriptions first. I know people also people do photographs first, but my bin can only hold about 30 items to the left of me. And I feel like this is really good for a squirrel pile because you, you're not overwhelmed. Like if you put a hundred things in a room and you look at the pile, you'll probably list the zero of them. But I was thinking of Scott, like if um, Scott sells liquidation, so he's not sure what's going to come in. So if you just get a pile of it and put it into that bin and then work through it, it's less overwhelming. Plus I can reach all of it to my left. If I was, I was just thinking about electronics. People talk about the um, testing. That's a, I would do the same thing. I would just have a rolling cart to my left with three or four different electronics that need to be tested. I would put it on my desk, test it with the, with the monitor and, um, all those tools that test electronics. And then each time I sold a different electronic, I would just get those cables, get those wires, get those systems set up. So over time, I could have an amazing testing station that can test anything. And that, that would only take you a year or two if you were in that category. Yeah, I, I was able to set up a VCR DVD uh, testing station um, yesterday and I, I, I tested all my VCRs and DVD players. Most of them work, so which is great. But now uh, I've got a, I'm going to set up a station to, to test all the different kinds of sound equipment that I've got. Uh, like I've got 
preamps, amplifiers. I mean, I'm, I'm buying them super cheap and they're selling for great money. I mean, uh, it's hard for me to ignore that. Um, no, that, that is, that is really interesting. The, because I would say as, as time progresses, it becomes easier to ignore. But in the beginning, since you don't, I mean, you're still learning a category, you're still developing. And I, you mentioned you're doing um, Hustle at Home's model, Hustle at Home, Hustle at Home Mom's model of t- making the best out of garage sales. If you live somewhere warm, that's definitely the maybe the best strategy because garage sales are what happens before the thrift store. Also, Ashley is going to be live um, with me on YouTube tomorrow for her call at noon Pacific Standard Time. So everyone that wants to hop on and chat, um, that would be fantastic because I want to do the, um, her model is really effective. Anyone that can go to garage sales year round, that, that's like, she makes 50K a year, just Saturdays. Is that net? Net. Oh, cool. That's but, awesome. But she's also, she has that system where Friday night, she plans all of it out, emails all the people, goes in the morning. She's the first person there. She knows what neighborhoods her Rolodex is insane. She knows like thousands of things that sell. She will never niche down because she doesn't want to. She's like, I, don't, I could only source those, those hours per week. And now she's having a third, a third kid. There's no, she doesn't have time to niche down. She just has to make the most she can those four hours. Right. So she has no idea what she's going to get. She sells, she's even sold auto parts. Yeah. Like, um, so anything that, you find during that period, the thing that she has is that four hour period. And then she has the uh, very, very, very strong listing habit. Very strong. And she starts at 9 PM. That's hardcore. I I can't imagine whole day kids. And then her secret, which she put in the last video was she can't um, sit down. Yes. You sit down, you're done for the day because it's been a long day. Yeah. I wrote that one down and I'm, I'm, try, I'm trying that out. So uh, I, yeah, I, I really like her model. I, li- I like, um, I like her, her channel too. And her video. She's only, she, she said she only works um, eBay like 20 hours a week. Uh, let's see four. That sounds right. It's um, maybe four hours on sourcing on Saturday, maybe five and then two to three hours a day at starting at 9 PM. Yeah. Yeah. She's got the videos and then she's got her family too. And then she does the running in the morning. That's very, it's a very um, organized lifestyle. And, um, you know, she can also help me because like she has kids too, but they're, they're like, the organization is the best that she can do. And she visited me uh, maybe a year and a half ago with her two boys and they are crazy. They're like, (laughs) they were running everywhere and um, looking through all the things. So, I mean, it it was, it was very cool. Her, her, because kids like they're a lot of work yes especially yes. when they're, they're young i had two like that yeah yeah was, we, we had was, one who was a tasmanian devil so i love it so yeah that i love that model of um her model is best for people who are have limited time because getting into a niche is like very time consuming like for example my store takes 32 hours a day it's not even possible for one person to do it i need a team to do it oh, wow so the um yeah anyway i love it what's holding you back and you said it if you're being honest it's just yourself that's always my favorite answer because just improving your sourcing um and that's why i made the video yesterday saying you really don't know what you're going to get so that's why i like the model of the listing station my listing station it doesn't matter what i get the only thing i couldn't sell right now is electronics because i have to test it i have the um a surge protector taped right in front of my station now so I could plug something in to, to turn it on, but like that's that's more like I want to charge something, or I don't even know if it's a. Um, one more thing I want to mention is um, yesterday I went to um, Best Buy to return um, a mouse. I bought a new mouse and it didn't work for me, and the guy went through this checklist to make sure the return was legit. He's like, "Okay," um, I was like, "How does this work?" He's like, "Oh." People bring in returns all the time, and a lot of times they're fraudulent. So we have a checklist. Item comes in. We, we try to make sure the serial number matches the one in the box. That's what we do. If, if it doesn't match, we just decline it and say, sorry, you must have brought the wrong item. We can't take the return. 
we check the condition. I put in the computer what the condition is of the item. Does it work? They test it right there. Then if it works, we put it back in the box. We print the condition because Best Buy sells open box electronics. They put the condition right on it. And for the, um, the mouse, he literally plugged it into the laptop to, to make sure it was still working. He put the open box um, sticker on it. It went onto a cart that went back into their, they have a little uh, cabinet with open box electronics at Best Buy. And it went, their process is completely set on how to, that's essentially what we do thrifting. We have to test the condition, see if it's okay. And they do the best they can. They're not like thoroughly clicking every button on the mouse. They're just seeing if it works, if it turns on, doing the best they can, goes back out on the floor. And then they have a, a, a generous return policy. So I like it. The, uh, he even took, the person in front of me bought a, a return to camera. He took a few photos even to make sure that the, the camera was working. So I thought, wow, this is cool. I don't, I'm sure their, their return fraud is off the charts. So that's probably why they have that put in place. Right. Um, let's go with Scott Race. Scott, what's holding you back? What could you work on? Uh, good morning. Um, probably just better systems because as you as things start, like in the beginning, when volume is low, you don't notice what's going to break until you really stress the system. So that's kind of what I'm working on and trying to optimize storage. Right now, I'm pretty maxed out and I have... I don't know, 800 items in queue because right now I've been able to go thrifting one day a week for 12 hours and pick up about 400 items. Um, so it's been working out really well, but it's a long day of thrifting. How are you feeling energy level wise? Um, like shit, but we're moving on. We're figuring it out. I'll figure it out. My mom's been helping me. Um, 15 to 20 hours a week, just doing uh, strictly inventorying everything. So that's a huge help. But I mean, taking hundreds, I mean, almost a thousand photos a day is pretty taxing. And then having to list them and it's, it's just a lot of work. I should probably start working on the macro to start yeah. helping with the listing. And because again, you just got to break stuff to figure out how crap things were well, like things that you thought were good are actually crap. And it's just definitely it's just constantly iterating on that. Yeah, I, I think that that's true. When you keep doing things until they break or you realize how tiring certain things are, that's like the the big part. Reliable help is is something that I'm working on. It seems like a lot of people who use a family member, husband and wife teams, or if they use a parent for or, uh, or a kid for 10 hours a week, that's like really solid because they hopefully care about your business as much as you. So I'll, if your mom can help consistently like 10 hours a week, that would be huge. Um, let's see here. Mark is saying on the chat that he spends a lot of time finding the right size box for things to pack. I I do not have that problem, but what do people do that sell things in different size boxes. How do you deal with that? I haven't seen any, um, I personally don't know what to do with that. Um, I go to Home Depot when I was doing a lot of electronics, I would stock up on every single size they had, extra small, small, medium, large, extra large. And I do use a boxer sizer um, to uh, fix the height of it and then cut down the sides. But mm. yeah, um, shipping will take up a lot of time. When I was doing electronics only, I would have full shipping days. Now that I'm doing more clothing, it's just much quicker. And if I have to package something complicated, I'm like, oh, I hate this. Yeah, I hear you. Um, Daniel, what's holding you back in your business? Um, I would say making this transition and uh, sourcing um enough items like i'm i'm really picking a lot when i go thrifting i'm not trying to, i don't just pick up if i see gap i don't just pick up any gaps thing i i'm more choosy and so i might pick up like 30 in a day but then i don't really like go every single day 
So I don't have, I mean, besides uh, picking up 350 t-shirts from Andrew, um, which is very overwhelming, but it's the first time I ever did that. Um, besides that, uh, having like a system, because I, I had it so easy, I was consigning, a, you know, electronics for a huge business and that was taking up the bulk of my time. Now I'm like running around all over Long Island, like up to like 60 miles and then trying to list, keep up with my listing habit. It's, it's uh, taking a lot more energy than, you know, my model before. Yeah, I agree. It, it's almost like um, a bunch of people have mentioned this. Reselling is almost energy management. How much energy do you have? You know, it's like if you liked on um, Wednesdays and Sundays, I do the whole day sourcing. I can't really do much after. That's why I chose Wednesday because Wednesday I record a podcast and I don't need to be physical for that. So it's like source all day, go home, do the podcast. Also that day, uh, there's no way I could cook. So those days on our schedule, we just do take out because I don't have any energy left at the end of the day. But other days with more energy, cook, you know, just got to this um, Benet Brown idea. Like if you have a spouse and you go home and you ask each other on a scale of one to 10, how are you feeling with your energy level? If they say, oh, I'm a two out of 10 today and you're a two out of 10 that day, you guys should just probably eat and go to sleep. Otherwise, you'll, you'll fight with each other for no reason. So like that's a good barometer. And it's been helping me a lot because Otherwise, you can't tell how someone's feeling by just looking at them. So asking is, is nice. Um, I do want to say one more thing about the box sizes. Um, I would go on USPS uh, supply store and just order like every single type of box because um, that looking for a box takes so much time. That was not a lot of FedEx for the person to save money, but a lot of things can fit into USPS so much easier. They already have like a self-adhesive size. Um, so I'd highly recommend getting that. And if you're doing golf clubs, getting the tubes, because you could put two of those together. Uh, tennis rackets, put two boxes together. Um, rather than like, if, you're, if you don't have a box, I don't, then you have to go drive to go get one or go to the dumpster. It, it's just too much time. Just have like more than you need. That's a great tip. Just have more boxes than you need and then a box cutter. I have a tip. Go ahead, Alex. I figured out that the biggest box you can have for USPS is 20 by 14 by 6. And that is the biggest box before it changes to the higher rate. And you can fit almost anything in there. Anything that is close to that size, even if I could save a little money by reducing the size of the box, it's probably just worth it just to throw it in the larger box because of the time you save. And then I use a lot of the large USPS boxes. It's like a 12 by 12 by eight, I believe. And those are free and those are really light. So that's priority mail only. And then I also will cut cardboard into strips, into like wide strips, put bubble wrap around the item, put the cardboard on it like a sandwich. And then I just put a, a bag, a 20 by 20 by like 16 bag or whatever. It's, or I mean, it's like a poly mailer, 20 by 20 poly mailer over it. And then it, it's sufficient. So that makes it, a lot faster with just those three. I don't really ship much big stuff anymore, but when I did, that was what I did. That's a great tip. Um, also, guys, the maximum cubic rate envelope is 18 by 18. So 18 by 18 still considered a poly mailer. Go ahead, Christine. I was I'm use I was using a contractor garbage bag the really, really the thickest kind that I could get at Home Depot instead of using a poly mailer because when I was shipping pots and pans, it was just more cost effective. Just FYI. How so? 
because it was less expensive than cutting up three different, if I had to, if I was Frankenboxing something and I didn't want it to have a terrible presentation, then I would put it, instead of cutting up mailer, or poly mailers that I pay money for, I would buy the big contractor bags, the biggest ones I can get and the mm. mills. And then it would be a nicer presentation and they were thicker. So that's just that's, what I was doing. That's a good idea. Christine, what's holding you back in your business? Right now, it's still the same thing. I'm, I am using the list that we created on things to sell, um, but I'm still learn. I'm on a learning curve on men's clothing. So, and then I also, I think I've made a decision right now while I'm in this learning curve, I am going to sell jeans and tops. I want to focus on tops, but bottoms, not just jeans, like, but because I like doing 5'11s. I can't keep those in my store. 5'11 tactical pants, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to do men's clothing as well. I went to the Benz yesterday and that was a definite eye opener. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was a lot of fun, but I had to hold my own because not really with the mamas, but with the men, you know, and it was just like, hey, you know, I finally told one dude, I was like, man, I'm not your competition. And then he would look at me and I was like, I'm not looking just for T-shirts, man. I'm looking for everything. And he was like, oh, well, OK. He backed off. I was like, <laughs> you know. <laughs> But anyway, I mean, it was a lot of fun and I will definitely continue going back. So, uh, cause I've got to lower my cost of goods. I just can't afford to continue to go and pay $5 for a shirt. That's going to sell for 22. I can't, I can't. Yes, you can. You can do that. But anyway, it, 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 I, 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 see what you're, I see what you're saying. You can, cause that's, yeah. that's almost every model is that pay five and sell for 20 plus shipping. That's like that model guaranteed to work. It's just a lot of work. Yeah. And, and that's actually what spending what, a lot of time shopping. That, that, at, that's what that's what Travis is talking about with hiring a shopper. Like if you have items that sell for 20 plus shipping, if you, you could pay four or five dollars, no problem. If it comes in quantity and you can just focus on listing. But yeah, I understand. When you're going and hunting items, ideally you would find thirty dollar items. It's just harder. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's fun. I need that excitement. I'm, I'm kind of a drama. I like drama. So it was kind of fun. <laughs> I love it. No, it is. It is a, it is a trip going in and battling to get the goods. And that's just, you know, when you want, like, uh, I consider the goodwill bins salvage mm. and salvage is stuff that would go to the landfill if it doesn't sell. And that is, that's what thrifting is. And that's that category has the highest margins. Because obviously free for cost of goods sold is even better. You know, so it makes me wonder, um, Tech and Sports and I were talking about that. Are, the Goodwills here, they look like department stores. They're really clean. They only sell certain brands. Everything is really like laundered. They take out all the insoles of shoes because they don't want to worry about odor. So that makes it even harder to be a shoe seller here because I don't like selling shoes with no insole. You have to replace it. Not having the original insole sucks but um my point is they throw away probably 80 percent of the stuff that's donated wow you know so if you have i don't necessarily want to do this but it makes me wonder if you owned a thrift store what percentage of stuff can be sold um hey josh you have a question hopefully he can chat if not throw it in the chat box and i'll Let's see, where's Josh? Josh, go ahead and ask your question in the chat and I'll, and I'll get to it shortly. Let's go with Patty. Patty, good morning. Hey, sorry, I'm listening what? while I'm listening, while I'm talking, while you guys are talking. <laughs> All good. What is, uh, what's holding you back? Um, actually, I'm doing pretty good right now. So I've kind of gotten into a rhythm. And I just want to keep it uh, consistent. So I did 20 listings yesterday, I'm trying to knock out anywhere from 15 to 30 a day if I can. You know, 15 my minimum, 30 would be like my max. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm just, whatever I'm making on eBay, I'm just reinvesting and going out and finding those clothes and putting them back in. So um, yeah, that's about it. I not, love it. Not, just stay, 
Yeah. You, so just you, staying, you, staying consistent because once I, if I can say that, Hey, I'm getting 20 to 30 done every day and I'm doing it consistently, then I feel more comfortable saying I'm going to scale up and, you know, maybe, you know, buy a wholesale lot of clothing where if I get a thousand pieces dumped on me, I know I can handle it. You have the uh, 15 a day model is amazing. You can build a crazy business on that. And that's why Tekken Sports was saying the person that he would invest in, in this group, number one would be Mark. So because Mark has a really, really strong listing habit. So that's like the, the number one key, whoever has the best listing habit wins kind of for reselling. If you list 15 items a day for 10 years, that's literally, I think that's, what is that? That's uh, 150. I've been trying to hit 600 every time I get close uh, and I'm not complaining. Um, you know, the eBay algorithm is good to me and then I get knocked down 20. So I keep trying to, you know, hit the over 600. So I think I'll do that today. And then, you know, the next goal will be hit 700 next week. So I'm just trying to do, I'm just trying to hit it and be consistent. So to give you an idea, Patty, if you listed 30 $10 items a day for, for 10 years, you'd make a million dollars profit on eBay in 10 years on $3 million in sales, roughly. That's amazing. That's 30 items a day, which anyone in this group can do with some practice. And 15 a day is like the Ashley Hustle home model doing it after 9 p.m. The um, That's the max you could really do. You can't really do more than that because because your life is too hard to do that. So then, um, but I like that strategy of, I like the minimum maximum idea. Like what's the minimum you do? And then kind of giving your, yourself an idea, like you can't really do more than 30 if you're running a household or whatever, you can kind of set an upper limit so you don't beat yourself up. Cause people always say like, oh, I, w- I wanna do the maximum amount I can do every day. And that's really hard. Yeah. I mean, I've got two kids that are in soccer and then school and, you know, um, hopefully everything's going to start going back to normal. So like my husband's back working in his office. And so it's just me here during the day, which is so much better because then I don't have everybody bothering me. Mm -hmm. So now I can actually like, you know, knock this stuff out and do stuff around here and do everything that I, I need to get done. Or at least I'm attempting, you know, you can always try. So Josh, Josh in the chat is saying his external site views went up 733% yesterday. Most likely reason for that is somebody shared one of your listings inside of a Reddit group. That's probably what happened. So if um, my friend Prince essentially hacks the system, so he sells GoPro remotes. So he'll go into the GoPro forums and be like, don't forget your remote this weekend. When you're going out for your shoot and people be like, oh yeah, I got to order one from eBay right now. And then he'll put the link to his own listing and sell them one. And his, his, sometimes his external site sales are 90% of his sales. So that's what would happen if you are in there and he invented a keyword. He, his remote's called the smart remote, but there's no such thing as a smart remote. He just used that keyword and told people on the forums got my smart remote for this weekend shoot. And people were like, what is that? And then they would go look for it. And then their, his external site views go up. So if you were selling, um, Christine, you were selling jeans and you went to the forums and said, you know, I love those, those lavender boot cuts. People, then people would start looking for that because they don't know what you're talking about. Because that doesn't exist. Like Matt Steampunk. It's very funny. But you can create your own, create your own item specifics if you practice. Um, let's go with Linda. Linda, what's holding you back in your business? Um, I'm noticing my storage is, I'm taking a long time to pick for things when they sell. So I've got to redo it. Um, and I'm not looking forward to that. <laughs> how, how, what do you, what do you think your plan is going to be? How are you going to redo it? I'm still not sure. So I have everything by category, you know, all silver earrings together, gold earrings together, necklaces. Um, so I think I need item numbers because it's just too much because there's like 200 earrings I have to look through, you know, just to find one pair. And I try to, I try to even separate them in categories, but I think numbers would work better. Yeah. I think even just one through 10,000. Yeah. So, um, 
So when you do the SKU, I know where to put it. Yeah. Um, when it sells, does that show up? Yeah, like I've never it used it. It just it shows does. up on the, okay. I'll just try one and see what happens. But yeah. I had an idea for finding small items like that. You could put smaller boxes in each large box of inventory. Because the smaller the box, the easier it is to find the item. So you can number them and then put them in smaller boxes. So then you like grab the small box. This is something I thought of. It's, that's the way I have it now, but it's still just um, too much. Like I had them, you know, like ones with stones were in one box and ones without and ones that were sterling and ones that weren't. And, but it's just, it's growing so fast with me listing so much every day. It's just, I still need numbers. That is like the biggest unspoken thing about reselling when you start listing a lot putting the stuff away takes forever it takes hours so don't yeah. beat yourself up if you get into this crazy listing habit because the listing and photographing part actually becomes the easiest part because it's so similar the actual putting everything away especially with different types of items similar items it's almost like if i had um i have 600 bins it's almost like I would put one piece of jewelry in every box just so I wouldn't have to look through multiple pieces of jewelry. There's just one bracelet in every single box. Just find the one instead of looking through 200 at once. That's how Amazon stores their items. But um, that is, I love it. Let's go with Nico. Nico, good morning. What are you good working morning, on? Good morning, Chris. Um, well, the thing that would uh, help my store is just to make a final decision. So I've been running the numbers off and on. Um, if I do hard goods plus clothing, then my drive time is a lot less because I can just shop Wyoming unless I want to go to Denver for some reason. But if I only do clothing, I really do run out what's close to me as far as a $30 sales price. I can do 15 and 20 and maybe never have to travel farther. Um, so I'm just trying to run those numbers, but there's so many factors. There's my time driving versus um, then on the hard goods, though, you're packing them out, which takes longer. So um, it's kind of a hard experiment to do. Uh, and I haven't made a final decision <laughs> yet on it. So if that makes sense, but. It does make sense. So you, you had me thinking earlier in the call talking about listing golf clubs. Yeah. Golf clubs for me are awesome. I probably have um, 12 left in my squirrel pile. Uh -huh. And um, it's important to realize you have to list those um, and wait for someone to need that individual club. Um, and you can't do anything to make it sell faster because you have to wait for somebody to actually need that. Uh, let me see if I can find it. Are you talking about irons or even drivers? Everything. Because it's like not like a set of irons is different because a set of irons, lots of people are looking for a whole set, but not lots of people are looking for a seven iron. But how um, would they need a specific driver? Like I have a Callaway driver that it's been sitting and I dropped the price, but I, I just don't know like why they would need that specific one. Okay. Let me give you an example. I sold these Ikea knobs. Okay. I got them at a garage sale, I think for 15 cents. I bought 15 sets of them. Um, me adjusting the price doesn't matter because I have to wait for somebody who to actually need these knobs. It's not something that's common. And unsurprisingly, all like 10 sets sold to the same person. So this I listed maybe three or four months ago and it just sold now, but there's no reason for me to mess with it because I just have to wait for someone to actually want these knobs. So when you're selling irons, it's the same thing. Get them listed and just wait. You, you don't know how long it's going to take to sell. Like if we go to, uh, let's say, Titleist 7 iron. There are, wow, not very many available. Oh, wait, actually, I spelled it wrong. There's 810 7 irons for sale. So somebody may have lost their 7 iron and they're going to look for it on eBay. Let's see what the sell-through rate is on just Titleist 7 iron. 810 available. Wow, excellent sell-through rate. Very, very high, right? And Titleist is awesome. These are the irons that I have are, are all um, Titleist that I'm reselling. And you can see here, I'm just saying, it's gonna, it might take a while. You have to wait for somebody who's actually um, looking for one. And this is some keyword spamming. People, the reason why the sell-through is so high is because people are putting all the iron names in the title. So this is not only seven irons. If you go here and look, here's one, 
here's two, three, four, five, six, seven. I would say that the sell-through rate is probably not as good as you think because it's including all of the different things that include a seven. So mm -hmm. just make, I wonder if you can put seven iron only. Let's see, this one's missing a seven iron. It's hard. You got to be careful because the sell-through rate. You could do minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four. And then you not get any numbers that aren't seven. Let's see. And also pulling it from the serial number. Mm. But yeah, you got to be, see, like I said, at a garage shell, you might be able to find a Titleist iron for one to $10 per iron. And you could wait and get the full money for it because someone's going to have to pay 30 to a hundred dollars to replace that one iron. I'm sure the whole set's not even that it is like, much cheaper. Here's one, like, it's crazy. One iron for 159 bucks. And these are under $10 to ship in that uh, tube, the priority tube mm -hmm. mailer. Um, but yeah, that just made me think if I was, while I'm listing my squirrel power right now, it's really nice mentally to have my listing station, which is always the same. Right. Go get a bunch of stuff, put it into the bin, list, list it all, and then fill up the bin again. Um, is the tube a flat rate? No, it's not. It's just standard pound. It's just standard, but it's it's usually under one pound for a golf club. Well, and I only sell the sets of golf clubs. You know, mm. if I have at least four, I'm not, you know, because otherwise that's more like clothing to me and I'll just do single clothing items. So to me, mm. I'm not really interested in that, but I am doing good on the golf bags too um selling those and it's also how you spend your time like do i want to pack items or do i just want to be in the car listening to my audio book and going to denver which is much more enjoyable than staying home all the time just listing 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 so that's why it's not as simple either it kind of goes back to the energy thing that you're talking about you know what gives you energy even if it takes more time um you know denver has restaurants that we can't go to here and things like that so there's other reasons to go all the way to Denver and combine it with a work trip. So, um, yeah. I, and if I do hard goods, if I stick with any hard goods, I've refined that down. Like the rice cookers sell really fast. They're easy to test. Whereas a VCR, I haven't tried it yet. I'm going to try it today and see if I like doing it or I'm able to do it. Um, you know, I found out on car stereos that you pretty much have to have a code and you have to have all these things that I'm not willing to do. So I just sell those for parts now. And I've kind of eliminated that out of my hard good thing. I, you know, I won't pick them up. Um, Tony is asking, uh, Denver is three hours round trip for me, but everything is involves a drive. Um, I live in a very small town, so I can never get enough supply where I live. So I have to at least drive an hour and a half. That's my closest goodwill is 90 miles away. Um, so that, yeah, that is smart combining work trips and personal trips. Um, mm. that's, that's also a way to kind of write off the trip. Oh, definitely. I, I have more mileage than I ever can make. And <laughs> I'm not kidding. So yeah, cause everything I do combines to a trip. If I go get groceries 40 miles away, there is a thrift shop there and I make sure. So I, Yeah. I, I'm really good at my mileage. I I show very little income compared to what my lifestyle is like because I I do I honestly am I'm always buying supplies everywhere I go. So I love it. Yeah. I have a question about using like a Sky Miles card. So I just got one, and it seems like it's not that much better of a deal compared to a cash back card. Um, I was just wondering if you felt the same way, if anyone has a mileage card where they get plain miles. I switched, I switched to a hundred percent cash back for the most part. I use the spark capital 2% back and then the chase freedom unlimited is 1.5%, but it also has points. So, um, I would say look at the different credit card companies rewards because it's it's nice being able to have free flights for life if you're a reseller and you do any any reasonable volume you will never have to pay for travel again because if you just pay your shipping labels um 
pay for your shipping labels, pay for your inventory if you can, and then all your expenses on a card. Those points are insane. Like, so the travel points, I would say, I don't know much about the Sky Miles card in particular, but I think those are fine because they don't expire. Yeah. Let's see. Let's go with Scott. Scott, can you chat? Scott Treebit or Scott Ray? Which one? What is going on? What what can you what's holding you back? I'm not much lately. I switched back over, Chris, to the camera for um, for the clothing. Um, and and it, you are it's right on, dude. I mean it. <laughs> You can take so many more pictures with a camera. I, I don't like how they aren't cleaned up, but I think that um, text on the right thing uh, returns. The pictures are natural. Get enough lighting, correct lighting. I do correct or I highlight maybe the first picture in eBay, but after that, uh, I just run with them. It, they look okay. But I can take so many more pictures and, and increase probably. I don't know what the number is, Chris. I can I can sit down and, and work it out, but I bet you it's at least thirty percent faster. For the, with the camera? Yes, with the camera. Wow. You, you, you do the same thing, Chris. You take your main picture, your top picture, uh, mm -hmm. you know, like on a pair of pants, you know, then your your bottom picture, turn it, same thing. Three pictures, pull it off on the table, take your what one your. Uh, label IDs and everything else, and then take one last picture of the sizing of it, and it's done. What is the? Um, are you, are you having any trouble with the focusing? You hold it down halfway and then click. Absolutely, there is a little bit because you're going from a, a light room, or you're using a light room. I use a light area mm -hmm. and to a table. So yes, there is a little bit of uh, a transition, but that's just it. Just touch it. Hmm. And I'm using a. A Canon, an ADDS, but it is so much faster in transferring pictures. Um, I, like tech, I go off the little card reader, transfers right in, or take them right off of there. Uh, put them, put them in a uh, a spot to save them, and it's done. It is so much faster. Huh. I Maybe. love the way the pictures look out of photo room, and I do use it once in a while when you get to your whites. You know, some darks once in a while. Some pictures look like poo. I'll go back and correct it, but it's only here or there. It's not every single one. Photo room started off okay, but it just seemed like it would slow down, slow down. It was slowing down. Um, so kick that up. So I'm happy. Okay. I'll have to keep messing with it then. I won't give up. Yeah, I was don't just give think, up yet. Because <laughs> I was just thinking like immediately, I'm like, how can this possibly be faster? The yeah. iPhone focuses so fast. Um, so, you know, I'm running a seven right now, so I don't even have an eight. What oh. is the, um, what is the, uh, what camera model are you using? Uh, an ADDS, an okay. ADD. Mm -hmm. So it is a newer, you know, model. So I think, you know, Scott is in the Canon M50. If, if I'll, I'll check it out. I'll look at some cameras that, have a fast shutter speed because it's um yeah i was listening to you before about your shutter speeds i'm like something's got to be off because that's that's not sounding right you know hmm. you're waiting on shutter i don't know what you're using for settings but i'll have to go look at it because i um the basically i'm at a 1160 and an f5 um and i highlight a little bit on here but that's it, and it's fast. All right. Um, unfortunately, I'll have to do a side by side, and um, take a look and, and see, because it's worth it. Because that's my that takes the long of anything that I do. Photography takes the longest. Uh, so with Nico's um, question about deleting photos, for me, it's pretty straightforward because I take all the photos, airdrop them, then delete them at the same time. There's no photos on my phone. Um, but then, uh, that takes about 15 minutes per day. So if I use the camera and I could just plug it in, I would save that 15 minutes a day. Um, but that's, again, also, that's not that long. 
I could have her start the airdrop and have lunch, you know, and, and not, not worry about that. But, um, that's an interesting thought, but I'll, I'll look at the different cameras, the shutter speed and see what it is so far. It's not, um, I looked at it like, and just said, there's no way that could be faster, but I don't know. I'll just keep playing with it. But oh, no, no, no. I think tech question. is right on on the deal. <laughs> Go ahead, Alex. Do you mind sharing the amount of money on average you end up paying to get an item listed? Because I want to see if I can get mine to be better. Two to three bucks total. Okay. Yeah, depending on so what it is. So you end up paying like you end up paying like two dollars for your in-person employees per item. A little more than that, I think, if I count the shipper. Oh, so that's just listing, not shipping. Just listing two to two fifty. Okay. I'm 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 planning on making a video and editing it to show my whole process. And I wanna show it to you in tech and anyone in the group who wants to see it and ask for critiques. Wouldn't that be something you'd be willing to do? Definitely. And that's good for the group because everyone can see like. Um, awesome. Yeah, that's a, great, that's a great way to do it. And actually anybody who's listening right now, please send me a video of what you're doing because that's my favorite. That's the opposite of an armchair, armchair reseller. That's an in-the-trenches reseller. So anyway, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Remember, Ashley Hustle at Home Mom will be live on my channel tomorrow at 1 p.m. I'm actually going to do this here tomorrow in the U.K. because I'm curious. It's always nice to listen to people in Australia or the U.K. and listen to their problems because they're usually different and then it can help us out.